Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky forgot. Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. This is going to be a video of me doing some coverage of the patch notes and calibration information for Dark Souls 2. I've already mentioned that I'm going to be covering this game quite extensively in all facets of it, and this is one of the things I really want to delve into. So, as of today, when I've been scouring the internet, it says Dark Souls 2 Patch 1.3 will release for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on April 11th in the UK. It says the PS3 update will appear at 10am BST and the Xbox 360 patch should roll out slightly earlier at 7am BST. And here are the patch notes for the 1.3. So in the multiplayer, it says failing to create multiplayer session no longer disables use of online items such as white soapstones. This is massive, guys. I don't know how many of you have ever had difficulties finding matchmaking because you're all on fantastic internet, but whenever I try and invade and it says it's invading and then it fails for whatever reason, I can't use the red orbs anymore, so I have to quit out and come back in the game. So they're fixing that, and that's a fantastic thing to see. The next one is, players now receive a small portion of humanity after successfully assisting in multiplayer sessions instead of regaining full humanity, which uh, I don't really know too much about that because I don't really do too much of that hmm but it says the starting boss fight with the looking glass knight while summoning other players no longer cancels the summoning process uh, once again something I'm not too clear on because I've never been summoned for that fight fixed an issue that prevented some bloodstains illusions and messages from being displayed not too sure if that's a good thing because a lot of people put them in fucking douchey places and annoy everybody <laughs> Fixed an issue where unable to participate in multiplayer session could constantly appear. Of all the messages I had, I did not have that one, so that must have sucked for the people who had it. Fixed some instances where the portray... Where the... Oh, hang on a second. The, the portrait of the person you were summoning was different than the actual character. Well, that was something that happened in Dark Souls quite a lot if people changed their armor after putting down the soap sign. You will no longer be able to take off Covenant Rings while being summoned. That's very strange, because now they're gimping people with three rings, which I don't know if that was their intention, but even in Dark Souls and Demon Souls, you could swap those rings out. So I fixed an issue that would cause some summoned players to fall through the ground at Earth and Peak. Uh, another functional one, never really seen it or heard of it, glad it's gone. And then we have Game Menu Interface Controls. So it says, Optimized Start Menu and Bonfire Menu Performance, which is fantastic news. Because anybody who's been playing this game knows there are issues with delay. There are issues with the buttons just not responding. There are issues with the menus just being atrociously slow, not loading. And uh, hopefully that's all going to be gone. Then it says, Trophy Icon for Holder of the Fort has been fixed. No idea what that is. Um... I don't even know what Holder of the Fort achievement is, so I'm not too sure why the trophy would have any problems. But well, controller now vibrates when blocking an attack. That's all good and well, but I generally turn vibration off my controllers. Um, bug involving Dranglate Castle doors not opening has been fixed. Obviously a good thing. Fixed an issue that would cause souls to be lost upon death with the Ring of Life Protection equipped. That is a big, big, big problem, and I'm glad that's gone. I never personally had it, but I read about people having it, and... Yeah, what a betrayal, man. Fixed an issue that caused some players to fall through elevators while using binoculars and magic simultaneously. Can't say I ever had that, but that would have been quite funny. Fixed an issue causing some enemies being hit by arrows at long distance to receive zero damage. Uh, I've seen this myself. I'm not entirely too sure how much of a problem it really was because the ball would dip off damage at that kind of distance. But I suppose it still would do something, so it is a good fix. Fixed an issue preventing the Brotherhood of Blood Duels from starting properly. I'm hoping that's the issues I've had, but I'm not too sure. Added a message for players that displays after entering the coughing in things betwixt. So people are changing gender and they don't know why, and apparently they're putting in like a safe mode message now to tell those people, your dog, you're a female. Uh, fixed an issue where all of the items and objects in an area would reset without using a bonfire aesthetic. Ooh, shit, I would like me some of those problems, but I don't think I ever had that. That would be amazing. 
fixed an issue that didn't unlock some items from vendors on second playthroughs and beyond. Yes, that is a big problem. That Anybody trying to get the Dragon Rider armor? Good luck. That shit is just impossible. And hopefully now, it'll work. Fixed an issue causing requirements for the Brotherhood of Blood Covenant be f to be 52 high. So, does that mean it takes 450 wins now to get level 3? Or has it just decreased each level by 50? So instead of 100 wins, it's 50. Instead of, I don't know, what, 200 wins, it's now 150 wins. Uh, not really too sure about that. And it says, Lysia's conditions for moving have been optimized, which... I have had times when I've talked to her, I've exhausted a dialogue, and she hasn't moved to Medulla, so I assume it's something to do with that. But the more interesting stuff is the calibration notes on 1.4, which apparently, I don't know when this one is coming out. I assume this is slightly different to the one I've just read, because it's not 3, it's 4. I hope this one comes out quickly, because... All of the stuff that I've just read to you is all good and well, and there's one or two of them that are really important, but for the most, none of them are mentioning balance of the game. And I'm kind of interested in that a little bit more than the other stuff, and the calibrations for 1.4 notes are all about balances, so maybe both of these come out at the same time, because there is the two numbers, isn't there? There's the top number, then there's the bottom number in the top right on the menu, so I'm not entirely sure, guys, but I'm going to cover it anyway, because this stuff sounds interesting. So... Changed the heavy throwing animation for corrosive urns. Reduced corrosive damage to items when hit. So, I disagree with this one immensely. I have no idea what a heavy throwing animation looks like, so I'll have to check that out. But, I think the whole point of these urns is to break stuff. And they break stuff really well. And don't get me wrong, I know there's going to be those motherfuckers that, that do it to just cheese people and piss people off and break the rings and break the gear. But... There are things you can do to fight this. You can use repair powder, you can use the the brass knuckle ring thing, plus two, that makes you have better durability. There are a lot of ways to fight it, and it would promote a more intelligent type of play. So I disagree with that, personally. Uh, increase in durability on twin blade weapon, decrease their durability degra degradation. This I agree with completely. The twin blades do... Like, hardly any damage unless you're doing something very particular with them. Uh, I fought a guy with a plus 15 twin blade with bleed on it, and I backstabbed him for 100 damage. So, yeah, there's, these weapons definitely need a lot of help to be viable in any kind of way other than stylish, so that's obviously a good thing. This is a very big one. Moonlight Greatsword can no longer be enchanted and buffed. Attack animations have been slowed and adjusted. So, I never really used this weapon too much. In fact, in my weapon showcase, I used the wrong fucking weapon, which just goes to show how much I know this weapon. But I'm definitely going to put it on today and have some swings around so I can, you know, get a frame of reference for when they change it. But being able to buff this sword is stupid, you know. You can't, you shouldn't be able to buff something like this, and you could. And my biggest qualm against it was it hid the potential of the weapon, so I didn't actually know what they'd buffed. It just looked like they had a massive sword with crystals on it. Uh, slowing the animations, I'm not too sure if that's going to be a good thing because they might have gone a little bit too far here, but we'll just have to see how it's how it's really affected when we play. So, the upward adjusted weight, the degree of toughness, and the defense on the large helmet of the Gurumu Warrior armor. So, that makes me think it's the Gurm. So, apparently, they've, they've tweaked the Gurm armor, which is kind of hilarious because I don't think I've ever seen anybody wearing it. So we missed out on super-powered armor, apparently. It says, reduce damage from the Ring of Thorns. A lot of people are going to be really happy about that. Um, I would prefer it if there was a way to make it proc. You know, if there was a skillful way to get that ring to counterattack, I would prefer that. But reduce damage is probably going to help, because a lot of people are using it. Reduce damage from the Ring of Old Sun, I completely disagree with. This ring, guys, when I, when I first came up against this ring, I didn't know what was happening. I just thought people were throwing grenades at me. And if you've never used it, essentially, it sets off an explosion, but it doesn't blow up immediately. It's not like Ring of Thorns. It sets out a little pillar of fire, this little ball of, of 
you know, flames, and then it blows up, and it makes a super distinctive noise. And even if you're not playing with sound on, it's easy to spot, and as soon as you see it, if you roll away, you will take no damage. There's absolutely no reason to nerf this ring, and I know a lot of people hate it because it's look-based, and I hate the look-based nature of it, but I think it's a really fun, and it's a really interesting ring because it stops people, well, it doesn't really stop them, but it makes people think twice before they smash the shit out of you with mashy stunlock tactics. And as it stands, there's no way to fight stunlock. There just isn't. And all those people that are just like, you know, well, if you have enough adaptability, you'll roll out on the second hit. You know, fuck you. I had 50 points in adaptability and I still got stunlocked. And it was a five hit stunlock that killed me. It's like, come on, folks, you can't say that this shit works, because it doesn't. It needs to be addressed. So this ring was a fantastic defense against it, and unfortunately, either due to the developers not thinking it did too much damage, or to the people who've been bitching at them on Twitter, they're changing it. And I think it's bad. But there you go. So, damage will not decrease for every enemy that Soul Sphere pierces through. A lot of typos in this in this particular piece of information. I believe it's because they've translated it, so I can't be too strict with them. So that's a good thing because if you're using Soul Spear, you want it to have some some good distance and some good punch. The next one is increasing casting time and decreasing damage for Soul Greatsword. I think this is probably an intelligent one. This spell is so fast that you can get hit by it before the blade hits you. And it doesn't make any sense because you can actually stun people out of this animation and still take full damage. I watched a streamer called Dreaded Cone do this move against somebody. They did the running attack with the katana. The the move had barely even wound up. He literally had not even got the, the laser of the beam out. He just moved his arms back. And then the person who interrupted the animation took a thousand damage and died. Which tells me, A, that there's something needs to be adjusted with this. If it's to tone its damage down, I don't know if that's the key. I think the casting time would have been enough. Slow it down, man. It's a great sword. Great sword should swing like you're swinging a piece of fucking fridge. Shouldn't swing like it's a, a Dark Souls 1 katana. But we'll see how that affects anything. So here we have upward adjustment of the bullet speed. Lump of soul to be tracked. Magic. Which makes me think that this is probably Crystal Soul Mass. Once again, guys, Google Translate. And a lower adjustment of stamina take the amount of darkness surgery. Right. Off the top of my head, I think they're probably adjusting a dark magic, a hex, right? maybe affinity. Because it says those who follow. And I don't know if those hexes take stamina away when they do life damage as well. So maybe they've adjusted that, but once again, I, I, I can't really tell what that meant to say. The downward adjustment of the amount of damage, torrent of soul, uh, magic. Once again, torrent of soul, this could either be soul geezer or soul vertex. It's apparently being adjusted, which, I don't know. Soul geezer is really easy to dodge, so I don't really mind it having too much power. Casting speed on recovery spells being lengthened. This is interesting. So, anybody wanting to use the heals, wanting to use the replenishments and things along those lines, is going to have a much bigger wind-up, which is, is good to know. And this is a big one, this guy. So, for everybody who said that this wasn't overpowered, apparently developers disagree. Increased casting time and decreased damage for Wrath of Gods. So... Who knew, eh? Who knew we would actually get a time where they would patch Wrath? And it's funny because this Wrath isn't that bad. Compared to Dark Souls 1, when you didn't know how to roll through it, and you didn't know how to spot it, this Wrath is... It takes a lot longer to cast, it's a very unique animation. The only other animation that's even remotely close to it is one of the hexes, or the the crazy taunt where you, you look like a rock star. But the damage is insane. You should not be able to do 2,600 damage with the Wrath of God. I don't care who you fucking are. You know, I think it's bullshit. So I'm glad the... Glad I can't speak. Now, I'm glad they're dipping the damage. I don't think the casting time should have been affected. And I'm hoping that they do this with some finesse. Because if they turn it into a useless spell, what the hell are the Faith guys going to use? Because Sunlight Spear takes forever to get. It really does. 
Decreases in damage and increases in casting time for all Firestorm-esque pyromancies. So, I, I kind of knew this was coming because this spell casts really fast. It has the biggest luck-based you know, adjustment on it I've ever seen. There's times when I've stood in a Firestorm and been completely untouched. There's times when I've been a mile away from a Firestorm and I've been one-shot. So, there's obviously a problem with this spell. The question is, is this the way to patch it successfully and make it something that's worth using? Because of what a lot of people have been doing, and someone on my videos mentioned, if you get uh, any animation that knocks your opponent over, like a backstab or a critical, you can proc a, a Firestorm and get a guaranteed kill when they stand up, because you can't get out of the, the radius. Which is not the most sporting way to fight, but once again, Dark Souls is not necessarily about being sporting, so who knows if that's a good idea or a bad one. Increased defense for Lucatil, Bernhardt, and Manscorpion Tark. Uh, one other NPC mentioned, it says in brackets, which is strange. Why would you not mention the NPC then? So this is interesting for the people trying to get the the equipment achievements, because Lucatil does die very quickly in things like the Smelter Fight, and it can be quite challenging keeping her alive, but uh, once again, not really much of a concern from a gameplay perspective because I think the fact that she died quickly, sure it was kind of frustrated, but it added an element of, of risk and danger to getting those achievements and to doing those quests, which I think some people might miss if it becomes too safe. The downward adjustment of the HP enemy ruptured the dead. Mm. So I believe that means they're, they're decreasing the HP on a specific dead enemy. Rupture the dead. And I'm hoping it's the enhanced undead. Or the enhanced dead creatures. Which are those... Essentially they're a big lump of fucking veal with a scorpion tail and a deformed head. Because they've got a lot of life. So that'd be interesting to see them have less life. Female mages in Shrine of Amana receiving nerf in both damage and their spells tracking. Oh! That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I would prefer just the tracking because that's the bullshit. But still, they know they fucked up there because that place is bullshit. I've just gone through it on, on New Game... I'm not sorry, on um, Soul Level 1. And I was using a bow I couldn't even use. <laughs> Enchanted with lightning. <laughs> with lightning arrows. Cheesing those bitches because it's just not a fun place to be. Like, it's one of the most interesting looking areas, and it's completely and utterly miserable the entire time you're there. The boss is beautiful. I love the Demon of Song. It's the easiest boss on the game, but me and him have some fun fights. The area, I would not have any regrets if I never travel through the shrine ever again. Fire lizards in the Forest of Fallen Giants will now spit fire in slower intervals. That's going to make getting the, the fire longsword considerably easier, and it's also going to make a lot of sense, because... If you've never seen this enemy spam fire, they're really dangerous. They're, they're stupid how dangerous this enemy is. It's, it's harder so than most of the late game enemies. It's incredibly dangerous. Right, downward adjustment period of the occurrence of the shockwave of attack during downswing enemy of backpack hammer. Once again, Google Translate, all powerful. To me, what this tells me is the nerfing the shockwave on the huge hammer that those workers in the Harvest Valley have because if you've ever seen it they do an attack that hits the ground and the shockwave itself is, is weaponized it's like something out of Castlevania it's stupid because there's nothing like this in the game the only other instance of this is those phantom bullshit stomps that a lot of enemies have like last night I was fighting the throne defenders at soul level 1 which I can now confirm is the hardest fight in the game at soul level 1 if you're not using pyromancy blocking or upgraded armor because it's just it's just fucking nuts and the amount of times that bitch jumps at you even though I don't know if it is a female but I think the watcher is a female she looks just skinny she jumps and does an attack and the amount of times I took full damage off her clipping me with her coat it's like fuck you bitch so dumb but the last giant now does even less damage to players and well mannered paid. Which, for a first boss, I do think that the last giant did a lot of damage, but he barely ever hits you, he barely ever attacks. I think it kind of balanced it out. You know, if you got hit and you got sloppy, you deserve to die. 
that's kind of Dark Souls in a nutshell. But apparently they're they're altering this, so somebody's bound to be happy. This is an interesting one. Lost Sinner now has less HP and does less damage. Um, I don't get that. I would like that on his buddies in New Game Plus. But the Sinner, it's as it stands. The only thing I disagree with with this boss is its poise. I think poise is a mechanic that From Software just haven't utilized correctly in PvE. I think in PvP it was fine in Dark Souls. I think it's dire in Dark Souls 2. But I think they've really missed the opportunity for knowledge to benefit in this game. Because I think you should be able to calculate the poise break of an enemy based on their armor. And don't get me wrong, certain bosses should have perhaps more than their armor dictates. But at the same time, there should be a viable way to get that flinch, to get that interruption, because it just adds such an extra technical level of expertise and knowledge and fun. And I have hit the Lost Sinner with attacks that Poise broke the Mirror Knight while he was using his shield, which, if anybody doesn't know, the shield attack where it summons a dude in the Mirror Knight fight is probably the biggest Poise crush in the game. I don't think I've fought anything that takes the kind of hits he takes during that instance. The only other instance of this is probably v Vestalt, when he does the, the, the crazy buff. I don't think I've been able to interrupt him from the buff, but I don't think I tried, so I'm going to have to test that a little bit more. But those two instances are fantastic opportunities of people having ridiculous poise, but usually being able to interrupt it, if you know how to, which is essentially dual club, L2 with the poise ring because you do like 90 poise crush per hit and you can do two to three depending on your endurance. I hit the Sinner with two of those L2s in a row which the club has 30 poise crush, the attack hits three times which is obviously three, six, nine and then the extra five damage on each hit with the poise ring which is an extra 15 damage. So that is a poise break of 105 on one attack. And I did it twice to her. So that is 210 poise damage. She did not blink. She went from being stood there with kind of her back to me to swinging her super long reaching, super wide arcing horizontal slash and she one hit me with critical damage off of a counter hit. That is bullshit. Don't think the damage she does is that bullshit. I think the, the, the length of the sword is the issue. The length of the sword matched with the uselessness of the roll. That is the two issues with that fight I personally have. But still, it's being nerfed. And if you can hear something stupid outside, it's because ice cream vans are somehow still in business. I don't know how. I thought they were all pedophiles. Right, Royal Rat Authority now has less HP and does less damage. Uh, this one is, is important, I think, on the damage end. Anybody who doesn't know, this is a boss that is essentially the Sif fight in this game. But it's nothing like Sif because Sif was well designed. This is just trash. This fucking thing hits you when it doesn't hit you. It does this dash attack that's a one shot. It's it's just bullshit, man. And it has buddies as well. Take the fucking buddies out. Don't drop the, drop the health. Take the bitches out. So I'm, I'm happy to see that change. Duke's dear Freya's laser breath now does less damage. Completely disagree with this in every feasible way. If that said, taken out the faggy spiders, I would have been really happy, but it doesn't. It says, decrease attack that you should never be hit with once you've been hit with it a few times. Like, the laser breath is well documented, you know, it's well telegraphed, it does a very deliberate arc, and if you're on the left of the spider when it's doing it, you are dead. That is how the game works, that's how the game should work, so I'm not too sure why that's, that's the case. This is an interesting one. Enemies around Sinner's Rise now do less damage. Hmm. Is that to try and keep them in line with the people in the Lost Bastille? Because they are slightly increased in, in their ability to take damage. Seems strange. And this is another big one. And Shadow men in the Flexile Sentry's boss area in New Game Plus now do less damage. So, I have a video of me farming these enemies for a few hours, which I'm going to edit together and do some commentary for. And it's going to show you, essentially, all the times I fought it, to, just to show you the drops. 
and how little they happen and how much you have to put up with this enemy and this enemy I think the suspicious shadows are harder than 95% of the bosses in this game and you just if you got to that fight on New Game Plus and you, they dropped like you know feathers and you didn't realize that you'd even killed them, you got really lucky. Or you had a super good build because this is an enemy that can one-shot combo you like the fucking mannequins, only quicker and in less hits. This is an enemy that as soon as you raise your shield, it can guard break you into the stun animation that takes forever and then one-shot you in super quick time. This is an enemy that can toxic you. <laughs> It can bleed you, it can toxic you, it's it's unbelievable. And to, to make matters worse, it wears the Ring of Thorns. So if you get a hit on it, there's a random chance that you can take over a thousand damage off of a counter-attack. Like, it's, it's the ultimate troll enemy, and I wish, I, I fervently wish, it was somewhere else in the game. Because I'd love to fight this enemy. But you can't do that when there's a fucking flexile sentry jumping around with double clubs, pancaking you. It's it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. So I'm so glad to see them change it. But at the same time, I wish people would have had the struggle I had trying to farm that damn armor. But that is the end of the 1.3 and 1.4 calibration notes. So hopefully these will be taking effect quite soon. And I'm excited to see how they affect things. But this video went way longer than I anticipated. So I'm not going to put any footage in it, guys. It's just going to be audio because it enables it to be a smaller file size. And I can get it up a little bit quicker for you to listen to. So, yeah. What's your thoughts on these patch notes? Let me know.